the TDI for for years. And uh, Bill Helmer, um, who's been the longtime TDI general counsel, I think everybody knows Bill, who I think is running late but plans on joining in person in Albany, retired from uh, TDI on November 30th. Um, and so he now continues to work for the company, but not in the capacity as our general counsel. Um, so he is going to continue to join these meetings, but we felt that since he's not officially an employee of the company anymore, he shouldn't be the chair and represent. So uh, I believe a letter was sent to everybody on the on the trust announcing that he's handed the reins to me and I am now the chair until uh, until such time as uh, somebody else steps up and takes this role. So. Um, Matt and, and Heather, does that sound okay from you? We're kind of doing this on the fly, but is that is that compute? No, that's, you that's fine. You're right. We we did see the letter. I recall that. So. Yep. Can okay. we just identify the names associated with the phone numbers on the line, please? Uh, so we have a nine one four number. I think it's Jen Laird White. Uh, I am a nine one four number. I don't know if I'm the only one. I think so. And then uh, just somebody with a five one eight number calling in. That's the Ray Brook number here. Okay. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Oh no. Ending in sixty-five. Sure. That's Ray Brook. All right. I'm sorry. I don't. Tracy Brown. I'll sit here. Tracy Brown. Tracy Brown from Riverkeeper. Riverkeeper, right? Yeah. All right, we have a quorum in person at three different locations. <laughs> Matt, I think, um, would you mind just quickly going over, I don't think we need to do introductions, but quickly going over what organizations are, are on the call today? Sure, yep, so we have reps from uh, DOS, DPS, TDI, DEC, New York City, Cena Cutson, Unlimited, uh, Unlimited, Roger, you're in a remote location, right? Excuse me? You're, you're not at one of the three locations, correct? No, no, okay. I'm remote. Uh, APA. If, if you ever need somebody for quorum purposes or otherwise, I just have to get down to Church Street. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Riverkeeper and APA. And we have a quorum. Okay, excellent. Do you think, uh, Matt and Heather, since you're in the room, I can't see you guys. Are we are we ready to get started? Yeah, we sure are. Do you have a copy of the agenda? I, I do. I got it next to me. Up. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'll I'll do a call to order now that we have a quorum. Again, um, thank you all for joining this meeting. We've got great participation today, and I think this is one of the more exciting meetings, maybe the most exciting meeting that this trust has had. So. Uh, hopefully, they'll get even more exciting after this. Um, I think we should first do is uh, approve the past meeting minutes. So I assume everybody's taken a look at those uh, minutes. And um, uh, are there any corrections or edits that people want to make to the minutes before we entertain a motion? Okay, hearing none, could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting, which the date is, Matt, can you help me with the date, please? September 12th. Thank you. So moved. So moved. So limited. We have a second? I'll second. New York City. I don't think, Roger, you can actually uh, do that, can you? Second. Got it. Thank you. She's remote. Uh, can we get a second? Just a vote. Second. Okay, any any debate on the motion? We'll just do Jay and Haley. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the minutes of September twelfth pass. Thank you. Hey, Josh? Yeah. Just for clarity, can you tell me who you have is moving the motion and seconding it? I took it down um, as Jay and Haley just because uh, I think Roger is remote. He can't participate as a uh, as a vote. I don't care. Come on, they're not 
to make sure you go with yep. the hits. Thank you for that. Yeah, and apologies for not being there in person in Albany, guys. I, I uh, did something to my back and, and didn't want to spend the day driving a car. So try to be there next time in person. Um, so the third agenda item here is an update on the Champlain Hudson Power Express. Uh, generally, I've I've done that with Bill in the past, so I'll 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 go through this and then of course answer questions that anybody has. Um, so we'll start with the groundbreaking which occurred on November 30th in Whitehall, New York. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think probably folks on this call were, were too busy working to attend the groundbreaking. Um, but for those who did attend, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was uh, a lot of great speeches. The governor was there. Um, representatives from Hydro-Quebec, representatives from the Mohawks in Quebec. Uh, and it was, it was a great event and I think a, just a nice recognition of the project and uh, all the people who've worked so hard to make the project to to where it is today um, including people on this phone call and part of this trust so on behalf of the project owner chbe kind of want to thank everybody uh who stuck with the project stuck with this trust for all these years and it was, it was just a nice moment to, to stop and and celebrate the groundbreaking um so i'm not sure if there's much else to say on that um, I will now move into sort of the more nitty gritty. The, the first thing we like to um, update on is the uh, interconnection studies. I'm gonna read an update um, just so I get it right. So uh, our primary uh, interconnection agreement, which is between NISO, NIPA, and CHPE was filed with FERC and approved on August 19, 2022. On October 24, 2022, the NISO Operating Committee approved the Class Year 21 report. Um, the study report contained the proposed cost allocations for the Class Year 2021 project developers. And Matt, I can send this to you if you can't take this all down. On yeah, November 2nd, 2022, uh, CHP provided notification that it accepted its cost allocations and deliverable megawatts as set forth in the Class Year 2021 study report. Um, and now that the cost allocations have been accepted, they will be adopted into the primary interconnection agreement. So that's a long way of saying that interconnection agreement and the cost allocations and the class year are essentially completed. There's a second more minor interconnection agreement uh, between NISO, Con Ed, Con Edison, NIPA, and CHPE. This is for the interconnection at the end of the Astoria Rainy Cable and the Con Ed Rainy Substation. We expect that will be completed in early 2023 and filed with FERC. So the interconnection agreement process for the primary interconnection agreement is, is pretty much done. And then the secondary one or more minor one uh, should be done in early 2023. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, uh, moving on to EM and CPs, environmental management and construction plan. Those are, as I think most folks know, that is the final regulatory filing we generally need to make uh, as the owner to get an approval to start construction. So we're doing that on a segment by segment basis. There are gonna be many filings. I see Matt Smith is on the phone. He is, uh, he is the, the lead um, uh, from the state in accepting these filings. So we're working very closely with him and his team and the other state agencies. To date, we have made four EMNCP filings. Uh, we've had one approved, which is for 18 miles of an upland part of the route in Washington County. We have filed uh, a couple smaller EMNCPs uh, to help with the schedule. One was for three eight acre laydown yards, um, sort of scattered around the capital region, and one down in Rockland, as well as four horizontal directional drills under the marine portion of the project. These are um, transitional horizontal directional drills from water to land or land to water, three in the Hudson, one in Lake Champlain. And the concept behind these is these drills and the associate conduit will be installed this summer uh, because the, these are kind of time consuming and complicated um, construction. So those, they will be installed. There will be no transmission pulled through the conduits, but the conduits will be installed uh, with the plan of 2023, if we can get those EMNCPs approved. So those are the four that have been filed, one approved, three in process. We have uh, many more to file, um, about 100 more miles of upland route, 
Um, we'll be filing the Lake Champlain EMNCP for that entire uh, scope, uh, we expect in February of 2023, uh, the Hudson River uh, later in 2023, and then the Harlem River uh, towards the end of 2023. Most of the rest of the land EMNCPs we expect will be filed in the first quarter of 2023, potentially moving into the early part of the second quarter of 2023. And the team is hard at work at filing two more EMNCPs this week uh, for 40 miles. So um, that, I know I said a lot. Uh, next time we do this, I'll, I'll have a schedule. It'll be easier for everybody to follow. But that schedule's a little bit in flux still, so I didn't want to put something up that could change. The last piece of our EMNCP program is we'll file an EMNCP for the converter station in New York City. That'll be filed in January. And then the Astoria Rainy Cable, which is the AC line under the streets of Queens. Um, we don't have a date when we're going to file that. That'll probably be the last EMNCP we file for the project. So um, I'll pause there and see if there's questions on the EMNCPs. Okay. You can't have a groundbreaking without actually starting construction. So we have started construction. It's a limited scope of work at the Whitehall laydown yard. So this is about a six acre laydown yard located off Route 22 in Whitehall. Um, our contractor, Kiwit, is establishing that laydown yard so that they have a home base with which to have supplies delivered to, trailer setups, equipment, et cetera. That's obviously the first step of the larger construction program. Um, we would expect additional laydown yards to be established and then actual trenching activity in the upland. Um, exact start date on that is unclear, um, kind of depends on the winter and so forth, but the lay down yards is the focus. So that's pretty um, contained construction at the moment. And then the construction will really expand throughout the state, particularly on the land side um, uh, in the spring and definitely throughout the summer and then continuing for a couple of years. As a reminder, the project is slated to be operational in May, 2026. That seems like a long ways away, but there's a lot of work to do between now and then. Any questions on, on the construction piece of the project? Okay, uh, lots of studies have been ongoing. Um, maybe some studies of interest are um, identifying specifically located infrastructure, both on land and in the water. We've had barges and divers in the Harlem and Hudson River throughout most of the fall. They just stopped working about a week ago. These folks are identifying the specific depth and location of existing infrastructure that crisscrosses the Hudson. Um, we did the same work in Lake Champlain last year, so we didn't have to do it this year. There's also marine surveys that we've worked closely with DEC on that are all of the field work has been done for those. So that's benthic surveys, bathymetric surveys, sturgeon surveys, uh, TSS trials, magnetic surveys. Most of these surveys, uh, as a reminder, are setting a baseline of the existing um, situation prior to installation of the cable, and then there will be follow-up studies once the project is operational. The TSS trials is really specific to understanding sediment disturbance during installation, and that study will be part of our EMNCP filings for both marine segments in Lake Champlain, Harlem, and the Hudson. So those are kind of highlights of studies. There's lots of other studies going on, surveys, out in the field, but but those are mostly just driven towards getting the design finalized um, for the upland portion. Uh, I, I think I heard some chatter early about funding of the trust. Yes, the funding the trust has been funded. Uh, I heard some big numbers being thrown out. It's two and a half million dollars is what's in the trust now, um, not thirty five million. I think I heard so it will get to that uh, level at some point, but not today. So. Um, that has been done. Uh, the Public Service Commission uh, has approved all the contracts. That was sort of the final step in the process. And I think Steve Wilson, who's uh, CHB's attorney representing Young Summer, has put together uh, kind of a binder for participants in this trust to sort of uh, put all of that uh, so that you can touch it and, and re refer to these agreements that we have. So Steve, maybe you could just spend a minute explaining what you put together for the, for the trust members. Oh. Can everybody hear me? 
Josh, can you hear me? I can, Steve. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so we, we just put together a little bound, uh, a little a binder of documents, and it just essentially contains the, the, the certificate conditions, uh, the relevant commission orders uh, on the trust. There was two of them, one to accelerate the trust, uh, uh, which is probably the most important, um, and then and then the actual trust agreements themselves. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the trust agreement, the attached uh, agreement with uh, Riverkeeper to administer the trust, and then the uh, the other agreement, the side agreement with uh, Bank of New York Mellon. Uh, so it, it was just uh, you know a way to keep all the relevant documents in one place. Uh, and we, we have multiple copies here, and if anybody wants one, you know, just email me, and I'd be happy to send you a copy. Do you think we could actually circulate a PDF of this to the entire trust? Do you have that available? Oh, yeah, I have all the PDFs that I use to create this, so if you want me to just... Send that to me as like a... Yeah, I can just, I'll send you an email and attach all the documents that are in here. I'll loop them together and send them. Yeah, yeah, and if anybody actually wants a bound copy, you know, with the... Bella bind on the side, let me know and I can send I can mail that to you as well. I, I would say that just to facilitate that if you want Steve to uh, mail you a bound copy, maybe just put your mailing address in the chat and we can pull it off and Steve can mail it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve, I think you said the administrator was Riverkeeper. It's actually Hudson River Foundation. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I misspoke. I apologize. So I think that covers my update. Um, I do want to say one more thing before I we move, uh, I hand the microphone over to the Hudson River Foundation. So I, I hear Bill Helmer's voice in the room. And I mentioned at the, at the top, Bill, that you had retired. I just want to take a moment to thank Bill for all that he's done for CHPE, frankly, for the state of New York on multiple levels, and, and really was a driving force in getting this project done, um, stuck with the project, stuck with this trust. And, and the end result is a lot of funding that's going to go to really important projects in these waterways. So I just want to take a second to thank Bill for all his work over these over these years. Bill, you're one of the few that's been here since the very beginning, so. True. <laughs> and I made the banana bread. All right. <laughs> I thought that Bill had said uh, a meeting or two ago that the original funding was going to be increased from two and a half to five. Million. Steve, you've got the uh, actually approved funding probably in your binder there. Maybe you should just clarify that so we're on the same page here. And the question was, what what is the current funding now? And then what was the, what's the accelerated? Yeah. I had it a moment ago. Give me, give me a minute. I thought there was something that had to be submitted for approval that accelerated the funding. Let's see. So on December 6, 2021, we filed a petition. It was the sixth amendment uh, seeking to change condition 165 to accelerate the schedule of payments for the $117 million, uh, which was originally set forth in the condition. Uh, the petition uh, was to allow certificate holders to increase their contributions during the period between closing in commercial operation from 2.5 to $15 million. And then that would have a corresponding reduction in the, uh, in the payments in years four through 35. Uh, and the 117 million would remain the same. So I don't know, I don't recall there being anything that we committed to filing Beyond that, we have commission approval to change the uh, or to modify the the payments into the trust. So, is is, is there something? Is there, can you give more details on what you believe we were supposed to file in addition to this? I just have a vague recollection that I think Bill said that the original amount, the 2.5, was going to be increased to five, but maybe that's just over the period from the close to. The beginning of construction or something. So, right. So, so we we're saying right now that the, the original 2013 schedule has two and a half million dollars as uh, financial. Now, I'm making an attachment to the 
the order. Let's see. But the revised schedule isn't. Oh, there was an attachment? Yeah, it was part of the order, the revised schedule. I don't know where the first payment was, but I think there were there are now payments during each construction year for commercial operations. So I guess one question is, now that you're actually in construction, when is that first construction year payment going to be made? That's sometime in 23? Somebody's got a laptop if you could go to the DFM and find the attachment. Well, the the original, in the binder here, but I'm sorry, those on the phone don't have it. So originally, and Bill, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but that financial close, right, there was $2.5 million, and then the next payment was commercial operation date of $7 million, right? So there was only the 2.5 paid between now and COD. And now there will be a total of uh, $15 million between now and COD in the next four years. So that 2.5 has been increased to 15, and that 15 will be in there uh, commercial operation date, which is four years from now. And Steve, isn't there, I'm trying to open the, the actual payment stream, isn't there a schedule of the payments per year during construction? Yeah, it didn't make it into the binder. Okay. 3.125 million in each of the next four years, Josh. Thank you. So there was an obligation 30 days after financial close, which happened in early November, to fund the 2.5 million that has happened. Then there are subsequent obligations to continue to fund the trust at the amount <clears throat> John just mentioned, and, and CHP will be doing that per the requirements over the next three years of construction, and then we get on schedule during operations. So I'm sorry we don't have that payment. I'm trying to open it, but um, anyway. So, okay, is, so that, is that enough information, I guess, yeah. Roger and others on, on, on what the plan is here? So basically, during, during first year, we're talking about 5.6 million. If you add those, if you add the initial payment and the first year payment, I think that's right. I think I it's best to, to probably bring up the the actual trust document. It's on DMM. If maybe we can look. Yeah, at I'll it. do. one three nine. Josh, Josh, this is Got John. It. I think the question from Jay was, did 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 do you have any? Um, did you anticipate when the first three point one two five million will and will come. It will come at the end of twenty three. Will it come? You know, when is that? Do you have any idea yet? Um, yeah, I'm I'm looking at it. So I don't know. I'd have to. I just don't know offhand what when the payment timing is. I remember the thirty days after financial close. Right. I don't know right. if the next three point one two five is due three hundred sixty five days after the first two point five. We have to look at it. It's something like that. But we can we can report back at the next meeting on the specific timing of the next installment, but it, it will not be in the next quarter uh, before we meet again. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, so I think if there's any other questions on number three in the agenda, which is the update, I'm happy to take them now. Otherwise, we can move on to the Hudson River Foundation and the technical working groups update. Okay. Uh, John, I'll hand it over to you uh, and the Hudson River Foundation. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that um, after the groundbreaking and the first tranche of money coming into the to the accounts at Mellon, that the, the attention for everyone on the on the technical work groups has gone up, and that's a good sign. And I think that the the message that we're going to send today is based on our interactions that. Your engagement's been important to date, and it'll be accelerating as we move into the first quarter of 2023. Um, you know, we've had lots of conversations with the leads for the technical work groups um, in all three regions that will be receiving funds over the first five years of the trust. And I think most of this work has really focused on thinking about the tier one priorities that were laid out in the original documents. Recall that by the the um, statutes in the trust documents, those priorities have to be addressed and, and they have to be looked at. Um, and again, they were quite broad. A lot of the work that we have asked folks to do is to think about in very general terms, which ones have bubbled to the top um, and, and to think about them in a couple different ways. First, to think about this initial not year by year, but as a four to five year, $15 million program. And that's important in that 
a lot of what those priorities areas are are quite broad and they're going to have to be fleshed out in ways that not only can have potentially near-term impacts, but can lay the foundation for long-term impacts. We've talked about that at a variety of meetings we've had right now. Um, and I think that that using the rubric that we have handed out, and I've talked about at previous meetings, we're beginning to get down to what seem to be tier one priorities that reflect not just need, but the chance to leverage other funds, to think about where they can have the most impact for the river, for the Harlem River, and also for Lake Champlain, um, and to set things in motion that I think will be quite important later on. Um, I want to thank the, the leads on the technical work groups for this initial work, but I also want to emphasize there's a lot more to be done, and these are not cast in stone right now. The, the intent is not to say this is exactly where we're, what we're going to be doing, what you're going to be approving later on. But this is the first step for what, as I said, will be a, a, a real acceleration in activities as we move into the new year. And again, the, the message that we've been sending, and I think that has been received pretty well by the individuals we've been working with in the city and in Lake Champlain and, and for the Hudson, um, is thinking about this as a program, not specific projects yet, but program and think about this as $15 million. And you know, year by year, it doesn't sound like a lot, but over that set five uh, increments of funding, a lot can be done with $15 million across the entire geographic scope. Um, so again, that this, these are not final and now's the moment for the entire technical work groups to get together. We'll be convening those work groups in January to really talk through what the leads and, and the folks they've interacted with think have bubbled up as top tier priorities. Um, and then we'll be asking to flesh these out into um, sort of short documents that we can bring forward to the March meeting. You know, the March meeting is gonna be really important for a whole variety of ways. And I, and I think the hope is that based on the work in the first quarter, we'll be able to come to the March meeting with an initial consensus from the technical work groups on what these priorities areas are and how they may be built out into projects that can receive funding. Um, there are really strategies in a lot of ways. I remember talking about that last year um, and how these strategies can be implemented with the funding. Um, it'll give us guidance, it'll give you guidance, and, it, and specifically it'll give you things to make decisions on. So that's the that's the work that's been done to date. I want to thank Nicole from um, the Lake Champagne, Champlain, um, Jay, who's been doing a lot of heavy lifting for the city, and, and Heather and her team at DEC for beginning this process with us. And again, um, buckle up because the real work and the real money is beginning to flow now. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is to have you all think about some decision-making and process kinds of activities that we're gonna to have to talk about in the March meeting. Um, recall that, um, you know, the, the way the trust documents are written, 75% of the initial funding for many years has to focus on priority areas. And that leaves 25% that would be focused on potentially other kinds of activities. What's not clear to us at least, and I think you're gonna to have to make a decision is the 25%, is that on an annual basis? Is that on a five-year basis? Is that on over the entire life of the, of the trust? So we'll ask you to think about that and we'll see um, about having a decision made by the governance committee on how you would like that 25% allocated and over what time frames, um, so we can meet the legal requirements of the trust. And, um, again, that 25% that provides leeway to do a whole variety of other things that have bubbled up and, and maybe priority short-term priorities or maybe initiating long-term priorities. It's, it's, going to, um, it's going to give some freedom to how the trust funds are spent. And I, I think that was wise um, on the part of those who drafted the initial trust document. Um, we'll talk a little bit about decision making. Um, and John, can uh, I just say one, one quick note before we pass sure. that? So I think the 70 Please. 25 ratio, 75 25 ratio, it's it's no more than 75, not at least 75. Okay, great. Thank so, you for that correction. So a little more flexibility there. Terrific. Thanks very much for that. So we'll ask to have further discussion about that. Um, 
the trust is pretty clear about how decision making is made and um, but we want to make sure that the criteria in the trust are understood by everyone there's a clear set of criteria in there we we've talked about that a long time ago but i want to make sure we bring that to the fore again in march and then finally um the last thing i want to say is that you know part of our role as trust administrators is to do some communications and outreach in a broad sense and we'll be prepared to do that, but I, I think we'd like each of you to think about what role you want to play in that, what role your agencies and your organizations want to play in that, and, and how much review do you want? Um, we have been known at the Hudson River Foundation for being quite careful and neutral, um, but I want to make sure that in your, with your vested authority as the governance committee, you are comfortable with how communication strategies are developed. And so we'll like to have a little bit of a conversation about that as well. Um, one other thing that, I, that I, I think we'll have to think through is our goal would be to have a draft implementation plan, a five-year implementation plan in front of you in, at the March meeting. And that would be important because it'll set in motion, we hope, um, based on your approval, both the priorities, but also how we will begin to implement those priorities and the flow of funding from the trustee, Mellon, to us at the Hudson River Foundation. So let me just stop and take any questions now before I sum up. Jonathan, this is Tracy from Riverkeeper. Hi. Um, Hi, Tracy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm, in, I'm here in, in Albany in person. Um, can you just remind us what the different working groups are? There's two. There's the the Hudson and and the Harlem um, is the is one, and the second is Lake Champlain. That's codified in the trust. So there's two. That's right. Thank you. <coughs> Jonathan, this is Dan Kelleher from the APA. What have, have there been recent activities of the? The work groups, or have they been on pause for, for a while? There's been a lot of transition here at the agency, so we have some new staff we'd like to add. And, and so just curious where we're, where we're at with those. Yeah, that's so that so mostly it's been the leads that have been doing this work and it. And I think it's probably fair to say that um, people have wanted to put time in, but have been waiting until things all got finished. And now that they have, as I said, I think there's renewed interest in a variety of ways so please send me those names and um, we'll be happy to make sure that and, and which work groups you want to be on and we will make sure that the, the replacements are made and that, that goes for everyone else as well i mean the technical work groups um, include governance committee members but also designees from your agencies and organizations as well so if there any changes please let us know and we'll we'll put all that into our our database here So hearing hearing no other comments, I mean we're always happy to answer questions, you know, by email or phone. Um, just let us know, and we'll be able to go forward with that. Um, just before I finish up, I want to echo Josh's comments uh, about Bill and his role. Uh, I've gotten to know Bill over the last 18 months, and and I've been at the foundation. And um, not only is he has a wealth of knowledge and history, but He's an incredibly nice person and uh, always helpful. So I really wish Bill the best going forward. And I, though I know we'll see you at these meetings. Um, congratulations on what I'm sure has been a stellar career. Thank you very much, John. Okay, Jonathan, thank you very much. So I think that uh, is a great update and it sounds like we need to allocate a, a good chunk of time in March um, to spend on this. Um, so we're now going to move into uh, Matt. I, if it's okay, maybe I can I can pass this over to you to introduce uh, the concept for this open meeting law and the remote attendance requirement. Is is that okay if I put you on the spot there, Matt? Absolutely. So as uh, folks may remember, this trust is subject to the open meetings law. Um, recent changes to the open meetings law and the expiration of an executive order that was in place during COVID now require us to meet in person to conduct business. Um, or in uh, remotely if we are in publicly accessible locations. So we're doing that today, both here at DPS, at Raybrook and at New York City, or sorry, uh, DEC in New Paltz. Um, we do have the ability to pass a resolution if we so choose to authorize our members to attend remotely in emergency situations. 
Uh, however, they cannot count a quorum. Um, so they can vote, however, and participate if uh, they're attending remotely. There are certain requirements that I've outlined in this draft resolution. So folks have had a chance to look that over. If anyone has any questions about it, discuss them now. Um, if we choose to advance this, we can we can vote on it today. Uh, we properly noticed this as a public hearing, um, so we can accept public comment if there's any public uh, participants on the line as well. Hey, you Matt, if, an, if anybody's uh, looking for this, it's it's one of the documents that's attached to the agenda for this meeting. <clears throat> Any questions on this? There's a typo in the six whereas. There's an extra. Sorry, Roger, go ahead. There are two whereas's that don't have a skip line between them. The huh. second line of that whereas. Excerpt during executive session. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, does anybody want to make a motion to pass uh, this draft resolution related to uh, remote uh, participation as detailed in the attachment um, named draft resolution remote participation? So moved. Is there a sec? Uh, Matt, I think that was Matt making the motion. Is there a second? City will second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed? Any uh, abstentions? Okay. The uh, open meeting law, remote attendance change passes unanimously. Thank you. So just a comment on this, now that it's passed, just let's remember this is designed for emergency situations and you can't count towards quorum if you're not in a publicly accessible location. So um, we still need to be available as, as much as possible for future meetings. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for Matt thanks together. for putting that together and, and making that happen. Appreciate it. Um, agenda item number six is review any action items. I think those were relatively limited. There were questions about the funding stream. Those have been put on the screen. So I think those have been resolved. Um, uh, are there any other action items people want to bring up? I'll just reiterate what John said. Uh, Committee members should start thinking about uh, decision making processes and the 75 25 percent ratio and how we're going to uh, start attacking that for the March meeting. Um, think about your roles, the roles of your agencies and the communications plans and uh, send any additional members of the twigs to to John. Josh, do you have a date yet for the March meeting? Has that been set yet? You're taking us to the next agenda item, John. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't have it open. I apologize. <laughs> um, any other any other kind of comments, questions? Maybe this is a good time to just put open the floor to sort of any any anything. This ties into the last. Jonathan, can you circ cir circulate a list of who the current leads are? I understand that there have been some changes since I think the original leads were appointed eight years ago or something like that. And I'd be happy to do that, Roger. And, and what, when and whether we will be hearing from the leads between now and March? It's kind of lonely here. Uh, there will definitely be meetings between now and March, but we'll uh, circulate all that for you. Okay, so an action item there, Jonathan, is can you can you guys send around to this whole group, maybe just a refresher on as, exactly as Roger asked, the teams, the leads, when are they meeting, what do you need? Um, I think that'd be good to get on the top of people's in, e emails. Happy to do that. Including the, including the focus items, like you know, there were white uh, sturgeons in the Hudson and stuff like that. I'd like to see that again. 
Okay, anything else? All right, we will now set the meeting dates for 2023. Heather, I feel like you might be the person who's got, I think we've got a, a good cadence to this. Can, can you remind the group what that is, if, if you remember? Yes, um, now that we're back in person, I, I'd like to avoid uh, the commission session dates, which are the third Thursday of each month. We used to meet on Thursdays in this group. Um, we moved it to Tuesday when we were all remote. Um, I'd like to recommend uh, Wednesday or Thursdays going forward, um, just not the third Thursday of the month, if that's everyone's preference. Do the, the second? Sure, it's second Thursday. Second. Second. That would pose a conflict for APA and we would be able to offer the room. A Wednesday would be better for us. So second or third week of the month, any preference? That would be eight or 15. <laughs> second or third Wednesday we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. So it would be the 8th of March would be the 2nd, so the 15th would be the 3rd. And it will be in the morning. Well, TDI has a morning call on Wednesdays. Okay. I think if we I start agree. at 1030, we're fine there, Bill. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I, have, a, I have a morning call from 11 to 1230 on Wednesdays. Is uh -huh. the afternoon an option? I think afternoon is fine with TDI. Fine, fine with DPS. 1.30 to 3.30 or 1.30 to 2? Are we talking 8 or 15? Uh, let's say the 15th. How about 3.15 at 1.30? And how long will that meeting? Probably till 3. That, that won't work for APA room capabilities for the no. public. We have to say APA. <laughs> But what do you mean? Yeah, the eighth. The eighth would work. The eighth. Afternoon. Okay, so March eighth at one thirty. Yeah, that works. All right. And then, How about June? June fourteenth would be the the second Wednesday. Does that work for the same time? June fourteenth at one thirty. Uh, give it. Give us a second here. Works for DPS. Yeah. Should work. Okay. September thirteenth. Can they slow down? Sorry. Yeah, the four the fourteenth. That's not going to work for APA room availability. <laughs> All right. So how about the uh, the seventh or the twenty first then of June? The 7th of June works. That's the first day. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Okay. Yeah, maybe let's, it's better for APA if we do the first Wednesday. That, that, that'd probably be a safer bet. Okay. Although, although the, the 8th works for March, so that's fine. Let's just stick with the 8th if we can, since we've established yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so that brings us to September. The 6th is the first. Wednesday. That's pretty close to Labor Day, right? Uh, Labor Day is the fourth. fourth yeah. Sixth. Is that a problem for the sixth? No. no. All right. So September sixth, same time, one thirty. And then just to <laughs> time next. December 6th. December 6th. <clears throat> at 1.30. Great. All right. So we have March 8th, June 7th, September 6th, and December 6th, all at 1.30. We're holding three hours. Uh, an hour and a half. Oh, good. That's that. Okay. <laughs> Two, three, not three hours. Okay, thanks. All right, so if uh, DEC and New Pulse and APA and Raybrook can book the rooms, 
That'd be great in reserve. I will do that for API. And Heather, I don't have it here. It'll okay. here or 19th floor. Okay. Confirm. I wonder if uh, the public will start showing up. It wants real money in play. They might. Yeah. We can point. host it new, new Paul. Great. Thank you, Heather. Especially after there's some information about how to get it to 25%. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Thank you for getting those meeting dates set, Matt and Heather and everyone. That's great. We don't have to think about that for the next year. Um, so I think with that, um, uh, unless there's anything else people want to bring up, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, uh, Josh, just one note. Um, so for March, people come prepared with uh, officer recommendations. It's our yearly avoid getting elected. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we welcome volunteers since we've had the same uh, slate for quite a while here. <laughs> no fourth termites. Thanks for the reminder, Matt. Um, and we'll put that on the agenda. Um, okay, so do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Everybody have a great holiday season, and we'll see you in the new year. Thanks, Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. So here we have chocolate brownies. <laughs> and this is home. Oh, oh, come on. Where's our brownies? Roger. I don't know. I can't stop the recording. I presume I can leave these behind so that the.